Just read a couple of verses. Turn to the book of the Revelation. Revelation chapter number 21. And uh, we've been studying the book of the Revelation. We're uh, coming into chapter number 9 on Wednesday evenings. And uh, I tell you, some of the things I see in there is so it's indescribable. Don't have words for the terror, the trouble, the heartache, the difficulties of those that will be left behind after we leave out of here. See, left behind just not a book series. It's a truth. There's some people that's going to be left and they're not going to have any, they're not going to have any hope, any direction. And uh, we need to be concerned about them. And, but I'll tell you that we got a place where God's people are going. Never been a place like that. Amen. We've, we've been in a lot of good places. Some of you traveled uh, uh, partially around the world and different places. But I'm telling you, you've never been to a place like we're getting ready to go to. Uh, when the Lord was speaking to John... He, he said a couple things early in the, the book of the Revelation. He says, Write the things which thou hast seen, and the things which are, and the things which shall be hereafter. Just a couple of chapters later, in uh, chapter number 4, he says, After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was, as it were, of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. We've heard that word used in relationship uh, to heaven and to the afterlife, I guess you would say. And a lot of times we didn't even know where it come from. But it's a Bible term. The hereafter. What's going to happen to you in the hereafter. The Lord was getting ready to show John some of the things that was going to take place hereafter. And He showed all those things previous to this chapter in chapter 21. But aren't you glad that He showed him chapter number 21? That's part of the hereafter. When we leave here, we're going somewhere. Amen. We're traveling. Could I say it's not going to be at the speed of sound, which is pretty fast. It's not going to even be at the speed of light, which is even faster. But it's going to be at the speed of thought. In a moment of time, we're going to be with the Lord. Uh, I heard years ago that uh, Dr. Uh, uh, I believe it was J. Vernon McGee that was saying that they had called in a bunch of a scientist to look in their telescope, they had seen something in the sky or out in space, beyond sky, I guess it would be, and uh, they didn't know what it was. So they called in some theologians, some Bible believers, and some that may have not even been Bible believers. They wanted to know what that was that was tracking up there coming this way. A big light. And uh, J. Vernon told him, he, he's a Bible believer. And if you ever heard him, he's just like us. He talks like us. He's from, he was from, originally from Texas. He lived in California long enough. He never, they never did change his talking. He talked hillbilly just like we do. We understand him. He said, you know what that is? He said, that may very well be the New Jerusalem coming down. See, it's got, to take a, it's got to take a road from here to there. It could be on the way. And that was years ago he said that. But could I say it still hadn't changed. The hereafter is still coming. Hereafter. Where are you going to be? You only got two choices. Brother Tommy said a while ago, heaven or hell. Saved 
are lost. You say, well, preacher, I almost got saved. That's not good enough. Can I say you can almost get to Kingsport, but that wouldn't be good enough getting into Kingsport. Can I say, I, I'm really sincere in what I'm doing. I'm really conscious of that. And I, I, I'm sincere believing in what I'm believing. Well, you can sincerely want to get uh, to Pittsburgh, but I'm telling you, if you go out here to the red light and turn right, you ain't headed to Pittsburgh. You say, well, there's all kinds of ways to go to Pittsburgh. I can go by the way of a bus. I can go by the way of a train. I can go by way of walking. I can even go by way of car. I can go by the way of a plane. You can go a lot of different ways. I'm telling you what, heaven's not Pittsburgh. Can I say, in order to get to heaven, you've got to go by the way of the cross. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes to the Father but by Him. Heaven's a real place. And I say that it has been revealed to folk. Paul got the visit there. You know, I, I'm amazed at some of these characters on TV who talk about getting to heaven and talk, and they just almost talk about it the day after they get there and come back. It took Paul 14 years to talk about it. And he still didn't even use his real name. He said, I knew a man. Were they in the body or out? I know not. Amen. But I'm telling you, that was Paul. Paul was testifying about where he had already been. He had crossed over. I believe, and this is me personally, Amen. I believe that he got to go into heaven when he was laying there dead Amen. and they had stoned him at Lystra. Amen. And a few moments after they had maybe prayed over him or waited around and maybe getting ready to take him over to burial, he shook off the stones that had stoned him and uh, got up and walked into the city and preached the gospel one more time. Amen. Matter of fact, uh, many more times. And could I say that Paul saw it? Stephen saw it. Stephen was being stoned to death again. I, I don't want to see heaven with a stoning, do you? But Stephen did, and he saw the heavens open. And Jesus was standing at the right... You know, he's not supposed to be standing in heaven. He's seated to the right hand of the Father, ever making intercession. But when that first martyr was given his life for the cause of Christ, the Son of God stood up and welcomed him in. You know, they had named Stephen. They didn't realize, I guess, what he was naming him when they named him as a little boy. But that means crown. He's the first one to receive the martyr's crown for the cause of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Stephen saw it. The heavens opened. And he listened, the Lord received him. Matter of fact, he was praying directly into the throne of God, saying, Father, you forgive them. They don't even understand what they're doing. Jesus said that very same thing. Can I say that uh, John saw it? I'm going to take his testimony. He gave us this whole book. Jesus saw it. And can I say, I'm going to take his testimony. It is a revealed place. A kind of place it is, is a place of reality. They measure this uh, city that is going to be measured. It's all these 12,000 furlong, furlongs long and high and wide is the New Jerusalem. You don't measure a phantom. You don't measure something that ain't real. This thing is real. Can I say it's got a, a real place for real people. He's making a real palace. For God's people. I'm not going to get a little mansion on the hillside of glory. Can I say He's going to make us a mansion? I'm not going to have a little cabin on the hillside. It's going to be a mansion. He said, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I'll come again and receive you unto myself. Where I am, there you may be also. And at first He said, He said, man, my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. And I say it is a place of reality. We're not talking about uh, Walt Disney. We're not talking about Steven Spielberg. We're not talking about Hollywood making up something. Uh, they can't even grasp what this is. Uh, and I can't even grasp what it is. And i got a book before me that tells me about it. Uh, the half hadn't been told. It's a place of reality. It's a place of rest. God's people are getting weary. Are they not? 
But there is a there is a rest for the people of God. God's preserved a rest for us. Come unto me, all ye that labor and heavy laden. What do he say? I'll give you rest. Amen. You can't buy rest out of a bottle. You can't buy rest in getting a better mattress. Rest comes from the Lord Jesus Christ. And I say it is a place of rest, a place of reality, it is a place of reunion. We're going to get to see somebody. Amen. Anybody got any family members already over there? Brother Terry sung that song a while ago. You know where you'll find them? They'll be kneeling at the throne. And you'll catch them after they get up from kneeling at the throne. You'll catch them running around the street of glory. They'll cross Hallelujah Boulevard and get on Glory Lane. It won't be long. You won't be able to catch them. Some of them hadn't been able to walk in years. Their steps are feeble. Their eyesight is dim. Their strength is gone. But could I say up there, there'll be no heartache, trouble, and trial. And I say we're getting ready to have a reunion. We'll have a reunion with the Savior in chapter 22 and verse number 4. Uh, he says, uh, And they shall see His face, and His name shall be in their foreheads. We're going to get to see Him face to face. I, I always said this, first time we'll see Him, we'll want to see Him face to feet. We'll look at those feet and bow at those feet that were pierced for us. We'll bow at those feet that uh, carried that cross all the way to Calvary for us. We'll bow at His feet because we won't feel worthy to look Him in the face. But it won't be long. We'll look at Him and we'll recognize Him like we've known Him all our life. You say, that's not true. The old fellow said, you reckon we'll know each other when we get to heaven. The old fellow said, well, you reckon we'll know less there than we do here? I believe we'll know. Somebody mentioned, I believe it, Brother Bill mentioned this morning of the Mount of Transfiguration where Jesus was transfigured and His clothing glistened white. And uh, do you know that uh, Elijah and Moses came down to visit Him? I do not see in that passage of Scripture in the book of Matthew or in the book of Mar uh, Luke or Mark, whichever other is in, I do not see where they were ever introduced. But Peter, James, and John knew Elijah and Moses as they came and visited with the Lord Jesus. And we will have to have a great introduction when we get there to Him. We'll know Him because we fellowshiped with Him. We've walked with Him. You, had, you may not have been saved one day before you met the Lord in heaven, but you'll know Him because He'll be the only one like Him. Everybody else will be looking uh, at Him and magnifying Him. The angels will be glorifying Him and praising Him and giving Him all honor. It's going to be a reunion with the Savior. It's going to be a reunion with the saints. Some, uh, many, many of you raised your hand. If not all of you raised your hand, you got somebody on the other side. We're going to be reun reunited with them. Their bodies won't be eat up with cancer. They won't be frail with heart trouble. They won't have been destroyed by a tragic accident or event that come into their life. They'll be strong and virile and powerful. We'll get to re be reunited with those. There's going to be a reunion with the saints and the Savior. Could I say that uh, one of the people that wrote most of the uh, in most song books uh, wrote most of the songs or more songs than probably anybody else in our song books is a lady by the name of Fanny Crosby. She. Uh, she got blinded when she was a baby. The wet nurse or whoever it was came in and did something to her eyes and put some drops in there and her eyes were blinded. And she never got to saw, see anything. She never saw anybody, anything. Matter of fact, she was so debilitated that she memorized all of the New Testament. And she remembered my memorized most, if not all, most of the Old Testament. 
She wrote 8,000 poems. And poems were turned into, about 3,000 of those were turned into songs. We sing them all the time. And they asked Fanny, said, Fanny, what would be the one thing that you would like if you could have changed in your life? They thought the first thing she'd say, said, I'd like to have my eyesight. She said, no, it would not be my eyesight. She said, I've had great fellowship with Him who I've never seen. And then she sat down and wrote this song. When my life work is ended, and I cross the swelling tide, when the bright and glorious morning I shall see, I shall know my Redeemer when I reach the other side. And His smile will be the first to welcome me. She did that. Uh, many, many years ago, she stepped out of this world into another world, and the first one she got to see was the one who purchased her redemption. She named that song, My Savior, first of all. She get to see the first Him first and foremost. Can I say that it is going to be a reunion? It's going to be it's a place of reward. You're not getting your reward here. You'll get your reward somewhere else. The Lord is going to reward His people. There was a missionary, the story is told about a missionary who was coming back from uh, Africa. He had been over there for many years, served the Lord there as a missionary. And uh, he, he, had, he was very dejected and despondent and discouraged because things were not going as well as he had thought. And when the, the boat started to enter the harbor in New York City, he looked out and there was a multitude of people that were on the pier and lined up down the street. He thought, they hadn't forgotten me. They came to welcome me. But when they pulled into dry dock, that big crowd was there because Teddy Roosevelt was getting off the ship. And they met him there. He had been on a safari in Africa. And he was coming back. And he was dejected again. He said it was just like the Spirit of God sat upon his shoulder and said, Son, you're not home yet. <laughs> you just wait till you get home. See, God's people don't get, it, get our recognition down here. Matter of fact, we're considered the off-scouring. They do not listen to us. They're not listening to us in Richmond. They're not listening to us in Nashville. And the folk, for the most part, until the last little while, they haven't been listening to us much in Washington, D.C. Now you can you can bag that up and take it with you. And I'm not so sure they're listening fully to you and I who are in gra grassroots America. We're on the ground floor of this thing. But could I say this? When you get over there, you, you'll see a welcome sight. What a day that's going to be when they march us in as God's people. It's a place of reward. But it's... Most of all, if not the majority of all of it, now they, there is some praying over there. We saw that in Revelation chapter 7 where they were crying out from under the throne. and How long, Lord? How long? But that wasn't the church. That was those that had been martyred in the tribulation period. But could I say, for most of us, if not all of us, there will be no need to pray when we get there. Brother Bill, the message you preached and taught in Sunday school, there's going to be some need to pray now. We need to pray now. But it's coming a day you won't even have to keep your, you won't have to carry your uh, prayer list. You can wad it up as you leave out. There'll be no praying, and I'm not so sure there'll be a lot of preaching. You'll say, praise God for that. <laughs> now we'd be testifying. We'll be talking about Him. I, I really hope there is preaching. I'd like to line up some of my favorite preachers. Paul. Silas. I never, you never hear much about Silas preaching, but I believe he could preach. 
some of those old saints that we've known. But they may, they may not be much preaching. But I'll tell you one thing they'll be. We'll be appraising God. Listen, you'll have the can't help it. It'll jump out of you before you realize it. You'll be saying thanks be unto God. You'll be using, this are trying to take all of our uh, Bible languages from us. They say, now those antiquated words of uh, hallelujah and amen and glory to God, you need to replace those. What do you replace them with any better? There's nothing any better than that. And I say, you ought to get used to it. The old fella, uh, Dr. Weigel, he, said, he wrote that song, No One Ever Cared For Me Like Jesus. As a matter of fact, the story behind the story is that uh, his wife had left him because he was a preacher. He said, I can't, I can't be with you anymore. I'm leaving you. And he, he got so dejected that he went out uh, walk on a pier and he said, I'll, what I'll do is I'll just walk off the pier and I'll just give my life. I, I'll die because my wife left me. And as he was walking on the pier, he had that thought. No one ever cared for me like Jesus. And he pinned that down. We're still singing that song. And Dr. Weigel was such a great Christian at Tennessee Temple when Tennessee Temple was booming and uh, Brother uh, Robinson was the pastor and the count- chancellor of the school. And they, they gave him a room. He, he, was, uh, he came and taught some in the classes on singing and music and, and uh, they gave him a room to stay in every time he came. And they made that for him. And uh, Dr. Howes was with him in the meeting and he said, uh, I-, I believe I'll go by and see Dr. Weigel and talk to him a little bit. So he went by his room and he, before he could knock on the door, he heard uh, something inside. And it sounded like a, a hallelujah and praise the Lord and glory to God. It sounded like the bed was uh, maybe being, uh, there was noise on the bed. There was just racket in there. He couldn't put it all together and he waited for it to die down and Dr. Howells uh, knocked on the door and Brother Weigel came to the door and opened the door. He said, I, I don't want to say much about this. He said, but I heard the noise coming from this room a moment ago. And he said, oh, that's okay, Dr. Howells. And I was just getting practiced up for heaven. Can I say, we ought to get practiced up for heaven. Now, I'm not saying everybody needs a shout, but I'll tell you what, you ought to be a good candidate for it. You ought not stifle it. You ought not push it back. When God gooches you, you ought to say hallelujah, amen. When He gets all over you, you ought to say something in the way of amen. It may be I see people worship and I see the tears roll down their face. Or I see a hand go toward heaven. Or I just see a big grin come across their face. I know they've got into something that they need to get into. We need to praise Him and thank Him. We've got a lot to thank Him for here. But think about that. When we get over there, there'll be a place of no more sin. It'll be a place of no more strife. It'll be a place of no more sorrow. It'll be a place of no more separation. It'll be a place of no more suffering. It'll be a place of no more sanctuary because He will be the sanctuary of that city. Could I say it'll be a place of no more sun? There'll be a place of no more need of security. It'll be a place of no more sadness. The former things, as the Scripture said in chapter 21, as the former things have passed away, they're gone. It's a place of rejoicing. Redeemed have something to praise Him for. We've been bought off of the auction block of sin. Purchased and redeemed. What a place that is. I haven't even got words. We've not got a vocabulary big enough to talk about that place. When the Queen of Sheba come back uh, from seeing Solomon, saw all his riches, saw all of his glory, saw all of his wisdom, she went back and said, y'all shortchanged me. Said the half hadn't even been told. Can I say we've been shortchanged on heaven? The half hadn't been told. 
When we get over there, I can imagine some of our loved ones that have crossed over. I, I look uh, just I look all through here and I see people that their loved ones used to sit beside them in the house of the Lord. Do you know what? You know what they'll tell you? It's exactly right. They didn't tell us all of what we was getting. The half hadn't been told. If you worry about them, they're in safe hands. We're the ones in sorrow. It won't be long we'll be reunited with them. It's already been said in the service already, Jesus is coming and you better get ready. Christian friend, get ready if you're not. Sinner friend, get saved if you're not. Maybe your last opportunity. He said, I'll, I'll wait to revival meeting in April. Maybe too late. Better get right. Let's bow our heads.